Hey everyone, thanks for being here. If you're new to the channel in the past eight months, one of the things I do on this channel each year is explore the upcoming year's lineup for all the different bike manufacturers. We are getting close to lineup season already. Last year we started mid-November with Indian. This year it looks like Kawasaki has already started putting out their 2025 lineup, so we're going to start with them coming up soon, probably next week. Before we get into that, I thought it would be interesting to talk through the past several months of test rides and demo days and summarize everything that has gone on. We're going to talk about what I've learned and what my favorite and least favorite bikes were. Before we get into that, we continue to pray for those affected by the hurricanes that have devastated our southeastern states. If you're interested in donating something to help those in need, I recommend going through Samaritan's Purse. I'll put links in the description below for that. Please consider donating and thank you. And if you haven't already, I invite you to subscribe, like, hit that notification bell. I appreciate every one of you that supports this channel. For those of you who don't know, I am fairly new in the motorcycle field. I hit the three year anniversary of having my motorbike license in August. This past week, my YouTube channel hit its two year anniversary. So in the grand scheme of things, I'm still fairly new and somewhat inexperienced. I'm also fairly short with a 29 inch inseam. So up until this year, have stayed away from bikes with seat heights over about 28 inches, but this year I decided to work through that and learn how to ride bikes with taller seat heights. I'm now up to about 32 and a half. I think 32.8 is the tallest seat height I rode this year. In this year's riding season, I rode 46 different bikes other than my own. 44 of them were on demo days. One was a scheduled test ride and one was a rental while on vacation. I was counting them up while preparing this video and was surprised to find out how many I've actually ridden. I rode 18 Harleys, I rode 9 Indians, I rode 3 Suzukis, I rode 8 Royal Enfields, I rode the Ducati Diavel, I rode 6 Triumphs, and at last I rode the Kawasaki Vaquero. Let's lump these into categories and figure out which ones were my favorite and most recommended and which ones I don't recommend in each category. We're going to start with the Retro Classics. I'm including Cafe Racers in this group as well since they have that retro styling. So in the Retro and Cafe category we have four bikes, the Royal Enfield Classic, Continental GT, Interceptor 650, and the Triumph Bonneville T120. My favorite in this group is definitely the Bonnie T120. That bike is a great ride, really smooth, and lots of fun. Putting a bike on the bottom of this list is difficult for me. All four were fairly decent rides. I guess I would put the Royal Enfield Continental GT as my least favorite, but only due to the aggressive riding stance on that bike. It is a racer, so the aggressive stance is expected, but still not my style. It was a bit uncomfortable for me. Next is the Roadsters. In this category, we also have four bikes. The Royal Enfield Hunter 350, the Shotgun 650, the Triumph Speed 400, and the Speed Twin 1200. To be quite honest, I wasn't a big fan of any of these bikes. I didn't find any of them really comfortable or really fun to ride. Since I have to pick a favorite and least favorite, I will put the Triumph Speed Twin 1200 at the top of the list and the Royal Enfield Hunter 350 at the bottom of the list. But there's not that much distance between the top and the bottom on this list. Next up is the Scramblers. We just have two bikes here, the Royal Enfield Scram 411 and the Triumph Scrambler 900. These two may be in the same category, but there's not much to compare between the two. These are very different bikes with very different feel. There's no question who takes the top spot and who takes the bottom. The Royal Enfield Scram 411 doesn't stand a chance against the Triumph Scrambler 900. I wish I had ridden the Ducati Scrambler to get a better comparison, but was not able to do that. Continuing on to the naked bikes, I am putting just two bikes in this category, the Suzuki 8S and the Triumph Trident 660. Technically, the Indian FTR is listed as a naked or standard bike, but I'm putting that in a different category, more on that coming up. Between the Suzuki 8S and the Triumph Trident 660, for me, there is no question. Winner goes to the Suzuki 8S. I'm not a fan of the three-cylinder engine on some of the Triumph bikes. I'm sure I could get used to it, but for a demo ride, I didn't enjoy it. To me, it just didn't feel right. Okay, moving on to the adventure bikes. Four bikes here. The Royal Enfield Himalayan, the Triumph Tiger Sport 660, the Suzuki V-Strom 800, and the Harley Pan America Special. The loser in this list is easy. The Himalayan takes the bottom spot. I did not enjoy that bike at all. 
top spot is also easy going to the Harley Pan America with the most power and the most comfortable ride. Next category is a mixed category. These are bikes that don't fit in just one category. They are a combination of different categories, the part roadster, part naked, even part cruiser. The Harley label of Sportster fits well with these bikes, that is a sport roadster. In this category, we have the Indian FTR, the Harley Nightster and Sportster S, and the Ducati Diavel. Yes, the Ducati Diavel is listed as a power cruiser, but it has the styling of a naked bike, so I'm putting it in this mixed group as well. As we all know, a couple years ago, Harley did away with the Sportster Evo that was made for years and years and split it into two bikes, the low-end Nightster and the much faster and sportier Sportster S. Defining the loser in this category is easy. That goes to the Nightster. It is a decent ride, but too expensive for what it is. Of course, that goes for a lot of the Harleys, but that's besides the point. It just doesn't stack up to the others in this category. My personal favorite in this group is the Indian FTR. The FTR just barely edges out the Harley Sportster S, primarily because of the rear foot controls on the FTR versus the forward controls on the Sportster S. If the Sportster S had mid controls, it would probably beat out the FTR in my opinion. The Ducati Diavel is a bit of a different animal, being a high-end performance bike. It has more power than the other two, but doesn't have very good low-end torque in my opinion, and the handling wasn't what I expected. It was probably the most comfortable of all three with a decent upright position and mid controls, but the front brake is too sensitive and grabs too easily. This bike runs almost twice the price of the base FTR, and for that price, I would expect a better experience. So winner goes to the FTR, the not recommended goes to the Nightster, and the other two fit in the middle somewhere. Now we get to the cruiser bikes. We have four categories of cruisers. We have the low weight entry levels, going from about 500 to 600 pounds, the midweight cruisers weighing about 600 to 800, the baggers weighing about 800 to 850, and the full dressers weighing over 850. There's a little bit of crossover between the midweight cruisers and the baggers. A couple of the midweights do go a little over 800 pounds, but this is good enough for our purposes here. Starting with the low end cruisers, we have four that I rode, the Suzuki Boulevard C50, the Royal Enfield Super Meteor, the Indian Scout Bobber, and the Indian Scout 101. Where we actually have competition on this one is who loses. Between the Royal Enfield Super Meteor and the Suzuki Boulevard C50, I think I'm going to give bottom place to the Super Meteor. Both are very chill, relaxed rides, not much acceleration. They're fairly decent bikes, but the Super Meteor has slightly worse power to weight ratio, so it takes last place but the C50 isn't far behind. First place is easy. That goes to the Scout 101 with its incredible power to weight ratio and massive RPM range. However, you're going to pay a premium for the thrill of the Scout 101 with an MSRP of 17,000. That is a lot of money to pay for a cruiser in the lowest weight class. This thing will outperform any other cruiser in its class, but it is not cheap. There are a lot of bikes in the mid-weight class, particularly in the Harley lineup. Pulling for top spot on this category, we have seven Harleys and two Indians that I rode. The Harley Softail Standard, Street Bob, Low Rider, Low Rider ST, Breakout, Fat Boy, and Heritage Classic, and the Indian Sport Chief and Super Chief Limited. As far as last place goes, I'm going to give that to the Indian Sport Chief. I really didn't enjoy that bike at all. The foot pegs are wrong, the ride wasn't very comfortable, I just didn't like it. The Fat Boy actually came very close to tying with the Sport Chief for last place because of its terrible handling. And in this category, with lots of variety and different styles, I am giving first place to the Harley Lowrider ST. Lots of power, a decent riding position, and decent wind management with the ability to really lean the bike and take the corners aggressively puts this bike on top place for me. I am sure that part of that is because I'm a touring bike guy and this bike comes the closest to a touring bike with the front fairing, but all that aside, I still think this is the best of these nine bikes. Okay, moving on to the baggers. These bikes all have hard saddlebags and most have fairings. We have nine bikes here as well that I rode, six Harleys, two Indians, and one Kawasaki. We have the Harley Road King Special, Street Glide, Road Glide, CVO Street Glide, CVO Road Glide, and CVO Road Glide ST. In the Indian lineup, I rode the Springfield Classic and the Chieftain, and my most recent ride was the Kawasaki Vaquero. 
Indian doesn't make their elite models that compete with the Harley CVOs available for demo rides. And I didn't get the chance to ride the Indian Challenger this year. Picking a winner here is going to be tough. For me, the loser is the Harley Road King Special. I know the Road King is an incredibly popular bike. That's fine, but it's not for me. For the winner, I guess I'll go by process of elimination. I really, really enjoyed the Springfield Classic, but I do prefer having a fairing, so it falls a little shy of top place. The Harley Road Glides and the Vaquero with the frame-mounted fairings cause a lot of wind and whistle in my helmet because the windscreens aren't tall enough, so they're out. I really wanted the Vaquero to stay in the running because the price is so much better and the seat is actually really good for me, but the lower powered engine is a drawback as well. That leaves us with the two Street Glides and the Chieftain. This is a difficult choice. The Chieftain is smoother, I think the center of gravity is a little lower, giving it excellent balance and handling, and it has an adjustable windshield. It is longer, which helps the handling and balance as well, but means that I need to buy reduced reach handlebars. The seat is also lower to the ground, which helps me plant my feet better. The Street Glides, with their updated version, now have more power and better electronics. Because they are shorter, the handlebars fit me better. The new and improved fairing on the Street Glide hasn't made a big improvement in the wind management. It just looks a little bit cooler. So for me personally, I'm going to give the top spot in the bagger category to the Indian Chieftain, just barely squeaking by the Street Glide and CVO Street Glide. And the last category of all these bikes is the full dresser category. These are the bikes with tour packs. I rode four of these, the Harley Ultra Limited and Road Glide Limited, and the Indian Roadmaster and Pursuit. Biggest differences are the fairings. The Ultra Limited and Roadmaster have the fork mounted Batwing fairing. The Road Glide Limited and Pursuit have the frame mounted Shark Nose fairing. Another key point to remember here is that Harley has not yet updated the Road Glide Limited and Ultra Limited with the new fairings, 12 inch screens, new style tanks and saddlebags, and the higher powered engines that they put on the Street Glide and Road Glide this year. They are still running on the old style fairing, small screens, and 114 engine. I'm very curious to see if they're going to put those upgrades on these bikes for the 2025 year. I'll be surprised if they don't. What's weird when it comes to these bikes is that in my initial reviews when I rode them, I liked the Indian Pursuit more than the Harley Road Glide Limited, but I liked the Harley Ultra Limited more than the Indian Roadmaster. Going back and looking at my notes from those rides, I find this to be a bit odd since I typically like the Indians more than the Harleys when it comes to the bigger bikes. Part of the issue is the wind management. The Ultra Limited and Road Glide Limited have much taller windscreens than the Street Glide and Road Glide, so they have better wind management that is about as good as the Indians. So that's not as much of a factor anymore. The Indians are longer, requiring reduced reach bars, but they have more power, better electronics, and lower seat heights than the Harleys. All of these bikes are very, very close when it comes to who is first and who is last. I could almost call this a four-way tie, to be honest. They are that close. But I'm going to go with my initial notes. I'm not convinced that if I rode these bikes again today that I wouldn't change my mind. I'm going to put the Road Glide Limited in last place and the Ultra Limited in first place with the two Indians in the middle. So there you have it, folks. To sum it all up, winners from this year's rides are the Triumph Bonneville T120 wins the Retro category, the Triumph Speed Twin 1200 wins the Roadster category. The Triumph Scrambler 900 wins the Scrambler category. The Suzuki 8S wins the Naked category. The Harley Pan America wins the Adventure category. The Indian FTR wins the Mixed category. The Indian Scout 101 wins the Low Weight Cruiser category. The Harley Low Rider ST wins the Mid Weight Cruiser category. The Indian Chieftain wins the Bagger category and the Harley Ultra Limited wins the dresser category. Three wins for Harley, three for Indian, three for Triumph, and one for Suzuki. Zero wins for Royal Enfield, Ducati, and Kawasaki. I really wish I could have made a BMW demo day this year. That probably would have changed these results, but hopefully I'll have a chance next year. So the real question is, who is the ultimate winner? Which of these bikes, when I got off the bike at the end of the ride, gave me the biggest grin, the happiest experience? Without question, the ultimate winner goes to the Indian FTR. In a very close second place is the Indian Scout 101. Both of these bikes are an absolute blast to ride. The next question is, what did I learn from all this riding experience? Let's focus on three things. The first and biggest thing I learned, as we already mentioned, is seat height versus rider height. 
being short doesn't mean you can't ride tall bikes. You just have to learn how to do it. I went from limiting myself to 28 inch seat heights to going all the way up to 32.8 on the Triumph Tiger. The second thing I learned in a similar way is bike weight versus rider height. Being short doesn't mean you can't ride a 900 pound dresser. Before this year, I wouldn't ride anything heavier than the 830 pound baggers I've been riding. I was afraid of the bikes with the tour packs, but when I rode the 2024 Rogue Glide that had a tour pack on it and realized I was able to handle it, that opened up the door to riding the full dressers as well. You do have to be careful. These bikes are not very forgiving when it comes to losing your balance or putting too much front brake on while the wheel is turned. I have seen these big bikes get dropped at demo weekends twice in the past year or so, both during slow speed maneuvering. Third thing I learned is that the more I ride and grow, the more my opinions change on what I like. A year ago, I was all about the Harley Street Bob, saying it might be the best lightweight cruiser out there. A couple weeks ago, when I went to a Harley demo day to ride the Pan America, I jumped on the Street Bob when it was available and rode it again, and didn't get nearly as excited about it as I did a year ago. It was an okay ride, but nothing super exciting. So it's interesting to see how that changed. One thing that continues to be reinforced to me is to never stop learning, respect the bike, don't get cocky, and understand that sometimes crap happens. Just get back up and keep going. Thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you on the next one.